Hey guys, so excited to be with you in this way, to be continuing with you in this Advent reading plan, this reading series, such a wonderful thing that we can connect in this way. A pretty incredible passage of scripture, so let's get right to it. Father, we thank you, we praise you. This is your word. I pray that you would change us and mold us and shape us in who you've called us to be. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. John 1, 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning Him and exclaimed, This was the one of who I said, the one coming after me, ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. Wow! What an incredible first two verses. And even just the first phrase here, the word. This is the word that John's been talking about from the beginning. The word that was from the beginning. The word that was with God. The word that was God and was with God in the beginning. This word became flesh. What an incredible first just sentence here that the Word, the Almighty God, would come down and become human, become flesh. And not only that, but dwell among us. This word dwell, John here as the writer, this word dwell means tabernacle. And so John here is going back to the beginning. And just as God wanted to dwell among his people and be with his people through the tabernacle, here God is dwelling among his people through the flesh. And we observed his glory, his glory, the glory as the one and only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And so not only that he was in the flesh, but we observed his glory. So this speaks of God, the word, being fully flesh and fully glory, fully God and fully man. That this, this here is the incarnation, God becoming human, fully God, fully man, full of grace and truth. John will speak to this in just a second as we continue. John testified concerning these things. This is John the Baptist, and I know it's confusing two different Johns here, but John the writer is talking about John the Baptist, and as I paraphrase, John the Baptist saying, man, this is the guy who I was talking about, who is way more powerful than me, ranks ahead of me, and was there before me. And it's interesting because technically John the Baptist was born before Jesus. This is John, and he knows who Jesus is as he leapt in his mother's womb, knowing who Jesus is. And and John here in these two verses is articulating, man, this is who Jesus is. He's not just a prophet. He is the Messiah, just as Isaiah read in verse 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We'll get to that in just shortly. He continues, Indeed, we have received grace upon grace from his fullness, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So just as we beheld his glory, we receive his grace, and not only grace, his truth. And he goes back again. He goes, he talks about Moses. And just as God gifted Moses, With the law, so God gifted us with grace and truth through Jesus Christ. This is the gospel, that God would come down and give us grace through the cross and truth through his spirit. No one has ever seen God, the one and only God, Son, who is himself God and is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. Jesus Christ has been revealed. He has come, the Messiah, to bring about a peace to this world. And I know what you're saying, David. 
man, if, if, if Jesus came and he's re been revealed, then why don't we see a whole lot of peace in our world today? And to that, I would say, you're right. We don't see a lot of peace. We see a lot of strife, a lot of war. And I think we got to distinguish a peace that Jesus will bring, a, a physical peace for the nations, and a peace for our souls. Let me explain. In Matthew 10, 34 through 36, Jesus says, Don't assume that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. What is Jesus saying here? And, and how do we kind of connect the verses that do talk about peace that it seems to be that those who believe in Jesus can have? And just like in 2 Thessalonians 2.16, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and every way. Romans 5.1, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Even Jesus in John 14.27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. So what gives here? I think, again, we have to distinguish the peace that God will bring nationally and a peace for our souls. And here's the lesson, that even though we are, we are around a world that is chaotic, that is full of strife, full of war, that we can still have a peace that surpasses understanding, circumstance, all of it, and a hope for the future peace that God will bring. Turn with me to Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3, verse 1. It says, About the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In verse 3, when they say, here's the word, peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not es escape. There's that word peace there, and this is Paul here in 2 Thessalonians talking about the second coming of Christ. But why does he say, man, when they experience peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them? What's Paul saying here? I think what he's saying is this sense of false peace and this false sense of security, that this peace is a completely different peace than Jesus brings. In. And he says that in John, Jesus says that in John 27, right? He says, Peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. And so Jesus, Paul, is saying, man, the peace that this world is going to try to offer is a totally different peace. And even the language here in the Greek is, is saying a peace of more of a comfortability with our sin. And so when that happens, man, it's going to come like a thief in the night. He continues, but you, brothers and sisters, this is us are not in the dark for the, this day to surprise you like a thief, for you are children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then let us not sleep like the rest, but let us stay awake and be self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled and put on the armor of faith and love and a helmet of hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may together live with him. Guys, because of what Christ has done, because of the grace and truth that he has given us, we can live a life completely different that even though those who are children of the night continue to think of things with chaotically and, and sinfully and, and all of it, we can live life completely different because of what Christ has done for us, that even while we're surrounded by all these different things, we can have a peace that surpasses understanding. And what does he say at the very end? He says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up in these things as you are doing already. And so my encouragement to you is that you would encourage yourself May the Lord encourage you with these words. If you here and now are experiencing stress, maybe fear of the, of the world today that's full of war, that's full of strife, that's full of chaos, that he's saying, man, the God of peace will bring about peace for your soul. And not only peace for your souls, 
but a peace in the future that he will establish here on the earth. Jesus Christ, the word from the beginning, becoming flesh, that we received his glory, received grace and truth. Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. God bless, guys.